ಆಗ್ಬೋದು ನಾನು is Burton's trade recap for the week. But yeah, so obviously prices reacted from this doji candle before the initiation. So we know that the sell liquidity order sat inside this candle. There's like specific types of candles that I really look for now in the market. There's like doji candles, inside bars, which will obviously be like so before an initiation, full body OBs, and FU wicks. These are the ones that I look for. And then if the if I don't get any of these, but I can still understand what price is doing, then I just wait to see a range and I'll take the whole range as um, an entry. So these are the entries that I focus on in the market. And that's because I've seen every time we get a reaction from those. So it makes sense for me to stay focused on those. And for me to go from these sorts of entries to just kind of any buy to sell, um, that's why I've added all these time frames up here because all I want to do is flick through the time frame to find a candle that suits my rules, and that's it. Um, but yeah, that's why I'm using so many time frames now. Um, and I'll flick through it and, and show you kind of like my process um, as we're going through this, this recap here, just so you can get a deeper understanding um, on what we're doing. But but yeah, again, so all I'm looking for is the same thing. So four hour chart, doji candle, the sell liquidity sat inside that candle. We know the sell liquidity sat inside that candle because we've had an aggressive initiation away that's broke structure. Um, so we know that's the point where sell liquidity sat. So then all I wanna do on a lower time frame is just watch how price is moving. And obviously we can see from this time frame we've got that momentum shift. Then that gave us the A to B price leg that we was in. And obviously price ended up reacting out of this buy liquidity pushed up back into the sell liquidity and then we saw lower prices for the week. So that kind of built the, we was pretty much in a range until last night. Uh, I think it was last night, until Thursday anyway. And then we started to get more of a direction. Um, pausing to let people in, the late comers. But yeah, so that's pretty much it. Just understand like the reason that this top one is up here is for the same reason, it's that FU wick again, one of the things that I look for to sell liquidity inside there that took liquidity. That took liquidity from the high, it initiated and broke structure. So to me, we're still in this A to B leg right now, unless obviously this low breaks and then this could potentially become that next move down, depending on um depending on sorry, just do it at the same time. Yeah, again, depending on what price looks like. Um that's an accurate. Yeah, so that kind of built a trade idea for obviously this buy opportunity. Um, obviously, I went through it in the week as well, where when price takes the high and low, we can expect to see a sideways range, and especially after a move up like this. Like normally, if we get like an aggressive move up or an aggressive move down, um, and then we get the the range. That normally means price is probably not going to come all the way back up to the top of the price range, but instead create a new range and then either continue or move back up. So um, again, we've had an aggressive move, gone into a range and it's either we get the range and a continuation or we get a range and then we get the move back down. So that built the understanding for this trade to understand that again, doji candle followed by initiation. We broke multiple structures here. Um, so that validated this for um, an entry. So the buy liquidity sat inside here, and that was literally just what I played here as the reaction. I knew that there was going to be a reaction for higher prices. Um, obviously, we had cause here. We had liquidity sat here as well. Um, and then cause just before the mitigation at the low. So I thought that this was going to continue and take out this high because obviously there's equal highs here as well. That obviously became a target. Um, but again, price reacted back out of... Um, the same thing that we're looking at here, just on a different time frame. Same understanding, same logic, just different time frame. Um, so if I go down to the 20 minute, we see again Doji candle here, followed by initiation that broke structure. So the sell liquidity sat inside here. Um, and you can see it on the markups that I sent um, in the moment when I was taking this buy. I already had this marked on as a potential place price could react from. I just thought either we're going to react and range just before we break, or this is going to be a reaction and we actually get a move back down. But I, to be honest, I wasn't expecting a move back down, um, all the way down to here. 
but again, that's it's literally just reacting to the market. Like I didn't, I would have taken this trade if there was an opportunity for me to take one in there, which there was. I'll show you um, when I dive into it using the time frames. But um, again, if I catch ten percent in a day, I'm happy. So that's that one there. Obviously, I went over the buy in um, my recaps in the actual markups, but um, I'll cover this so I guess it makes sense. So like obviously prices coming into this sell liquidity. All I want to do is just see how price is reacting from there. And my kind of entry, anything I'm looking for entry is probably going to be like six minute and below. So I use six, five, four, three, two, one. And again, all I want to do is look for a candle that fits my rules. That is literally it. But we see price reacts there. One to the four, three, two, and one. And again, there was nothing there for me to even play. The only thing I could have played for a potential trade was this. Doji candle followed by initiation. So I would have been looking up here for a sell if we got one. Um, and again, it just follows the same rules of I just want to see a break of structure in a minute. Um, which I mean, that was the swing break there. These were the swing points. So this was the bullish range that we were currently in. That's your momentum shift. Um, and again, for me, I, there was nothing to, to even play there. Could have potentially played something in here using the time frames. Um, which we got. We should have done that. I mean, doji candle there, followed by initiation. The initiation was one candle, so you, sometimes you got to be real quick if you're um, just flicking through the time frames to just understand what's happening. But obviously, you can use the minute to see that that was an initiation here that happens. And then you can literally just use the whole sideways range. And that would have potentially been an entry. Again, nothing I would have taken um, for me, but something you could have taken if you were trying to be more aggressive getting into that trade into that trade there but that's a potential short you could have got into again if you didn't play the reaction this trades um i mean this kind of threw me off a little bit i was looking at two places within this range first things first was obviously we're in a sideways range taking out lows and highs and we've had an aggressive move down so i was thinking again could get a sideways range and continue lower and that was basically the the understanding for both of these potential trades Let them in but yeah so this one here is again the same logic let's do the same thing every time um for my understanding wherever that's gone yeah here it is we've got um inside bar again here also doji candle meaning lower time frame range meaning sell liquidity sat inside there again just for um subconscious purposes and and Telling you the same thing over and over again. The sell liquidity sat inside this range, and we know that because of the initiation that broke structure here. So we know that there's buy to sells that need mitigating. So when I say sell liquidity orders, that's what I mean. Buy to sells that need to be mitigated, so they need to be reacted from. Um, and that's pretty much the logic for, for that. Obviously, we can see that we're in this range now between this high and this low. So this is essentially a bullish range because we've broken structure here. Um, but again, we've got OBs on both sides holding the range. Um, that's the two yellow parts. Um, and yeah, all I wanted to do was just kind of understand what was happening. Like when I come to the charts every single day, I completely clean the chart. I go on to the delete thing. I start from the daily, come all the way down. I try and look at every single time frame that I can to give me an understanding of what's happening until I eventually find my price range. And then I've got my premium and discount. Then I look at the, the ranges, so price delivery. Again, these are both ranges. Then I'm looking at the structure, overall where the structure is, broken structure here. So we're in, overall, this is a bullish range, low to high, but we're in a bearish market. So I know that this can just be a pullback for continuation. So even though we're in this bullish range, and I only really want to be looking for buys in a bullish range, I still took the sales with the understanding that we're in a bearish market and could continue lower. And then if this is a true MS, where's the first target? The low. So that built understanding. And obviously I didn't really, like this week in terms of my trading, um, had a few things I need to sort outside of trading, which has taken my, a lot of my energy. So my actual time at the charts has not been much in terms of actually trading, but I always do the same thing every time I go into observation, I get in the flow, gain my confidence, and then I start trading. That's always my, my process. And 
my process is always the same from whether I've just taken a win, whether I've just taken a loss. I always do the same thing. I always go back to observation, get into the flow, gain my confidence and then start trading instead of jumping straight to the charts, trying to trade straight away. It just doesn't really make sense. I'd much rather get in the confidence. And what, how do I do that is I literally go from higher time frame all the way down to the lower time frame, gain my understanding, mark up everything that I'm seeing. Then I go into observation, understand what's actually happening in the market. That gives me my confidence. And then I start to execute positions. Um, but I do that every time and that's what gives me confidence. Um, but yeah, so just going into the trades. So just don't answer the minute. This, some of these, um, there's only two out of three of these trades that I did take. This one I didn't take, but I just wanted to mark it up because it fit my rules um, for entry. Just wanted to go over it again, but we've got momentum shift that's happened here. Like so. Yeah, we've got momentum shifts that's happened here. Again, all I want to do is use my time frames to find entries between an A and B leg. So if this is an A and B leg here that's broken this structure and we're playing potential bearish prices, all I want to do is look between the high and the low, find out where premium pricing is and find out what entries I can play within premium pricing. That's literally it. Um, so then use time frames for three minute. What do we see on a three minute? we got inside bar here, followed by initiation, broke structure, broke, broke multiple structures. So again, that was in premium pricing between the A to B leg. So that was a entry. That's literally it. I don't overthink it or anything like that. That's what my rules say is what I look for for entry. So that was a potential entry during New York yesterday. Um, and trading in this, and one thing I've noticed about trading in this way where I kind of use all my time frames to find um, candles candles of entry that I like um, my stop losses are getting a lot smaller so I've gone from like a two pip stop to now anything between 1.2 which is the lowest I'll go um, 1.2 to like 1.7 1.8 that's kind of like my um, stop sizes now and I've gone back to I don't know if the um, older lot any of you older guys that have been here since telegram knew my entry process was always a limit order um, I don't really like entering a market. It's, for me, it's just too emotional, just wanting to get in the trade. So I prefer to use limit orders at open or 50%. Um, I'll use open if my stop can be under two pips, but if it goes over two pips, then I'll use 50% uh, and two and a half pip stop is the biggest stop that I'll use. Um, just so that I can still get into these trades then. And because I'm only trying to make 20%, uh, sorry, 10%. So that's 25 pips with a 2.5 pip stop. So still not a massive amount for the market to move. That wind is crazy. Um, but yeah, so obviously that's, I just want to like these, marking up these entries is more to just train myself to say, cool, well, in these sessions, these are the entries that I could have taken um, and feed my subconscious to, to, to see these entries over and over again. So I pretty much do that all week. So like on a Saturday, I'll go through pretty much everything and look at all the potential entries for the week. I don't know where my, hold on. See if I can get this one back. Um, oh, it's maybe just a time frame, but um, yeah, I just want to go through the entire week and just understand what every single entry was. And obviously did that fit my rules of execution, which again, I'll give you the rules at the start. They're the candles that I look for. And then I just look for an A to B leg make sure I'm selling a premium buying at discount. And then as long as I've got an entry candle within that area, then I'll look to take the trade. Um, either as a reaction, so like this, for example, would be a reaction. Or if it's like a bigger zone, for example, let's say it's a zone like this size, where I could use a, um, an entry at the 50% like I done last week for that um, short trade with a 2.5 pip stop or I can wait for a momentum shift and play the MS. Again, using my time frames to find the candle or I wait for the momentum shift and see if I can catch a continuation. Like so, get something like this. They're my rules of execution in terms of how I can get into the market. How I actually get into the market is limit orders. But if I, let's say I've got a limit order at open and price comes up to the open and doesn't tag me in, then I literally don't, um, I literally just enter at market, but sometimes that's less prepared. So my stop gets bigger. Um, like that trade that I took 
in the week. I'm pretty sure it was around about, I mean, we're three minute charts. So it was on the minute, but it was around about one of these areas down here. I'm pretty sure it was, but my stop was um, 1.2 on the limit, but I had to enter a market and it became a two pip stop because I had to do it so quickly. But, um, but yeah, so how come we didn't take it from the top? Where would I have taken it from the top? Nothing in there for me to take. But like normally, if you see a very obvious trade that I would have obviously got into, but I didn't get into, it's probably because I'm not at the charts. I only trade when I'm at the charts. I only look at the, the trades when I'm at the charts. I can't trade when I'm not there. So um, sometimes I'll just leave limit orders on though. It literally just depends on what sort of trade it is and um, how it looks and so on and so on. Um, but yeah, so just going back into this this trade here then. So originally I was looking at this, actually it's gone to a minute. I was looking at playing both sides because price has reacted back out of, uh, nah bro. So you didn't take it because it didn't fit your rules. No, I just said I didn't take it because I wasn't at the charts. Um, but yeah, so one second. Got it. Um, but yeah, cool. So this was obviously a trade I could have taken during New York, which I wasn't even looking at the charts until pretty much here. Um, I started observing it at this point. Um, where Basically, where you see the drawings start to come on on the charts, this is where I started observing from. Um, so I didn't see this, but I marked it up to um, obviously talk about it and mark it up at the end of the day and just obviously see my rules playing out again and again and again um, which is always good for your to feed your subconscious but again like the the two places that i was looking at for sales was that one up here in this doji candle again doji candle being sell liquidity sat inside there followed by the initiation so I was thinking like price could come down to this buy area, react, push up, and maybe we get a big sell during Friday. Um, that was kind of like my first, uh, I'll just check this now, I'm waiting. Yeah, that was kind of like my first understanding of what might happen in this range. Because again, like we're in this bullish range that's broken structure. So my thoughts is that when we're at this discount price, I can potentially look for some buys. And where could I buy to? Well, we've got this range that's had this initiation and aggression speed. So this is my first kind of area that I'd look for sales again, because that's where sell liquidity is at. Um, but yeah, then I was gonna try and look for a buy up into there. And then I was thinking, cool, well, if price ends up actually, this is a true momentum shift and this low gets taken, I wanna be in a sell and look for a hedge um, so I can play both sides. And that was the understanding for um, what I was playing there. But yeah, so then it, all it is then about is just understanding how price is moving um, literally from here all the way down and just using the time frames to understand what's happening. So let me play this. Mm -hmm. but yeah, it's literally from FU wick here, we can see to cut liquidity, we mitigated here, full bodied OB. That's then mitigated here and we see lower prices. Then all I'm doing is just looking at what's happened within here. We see the aggression and speed all selling happening. So again, just use your time frames. Look for candles that you understand. Got to the five minute. I'm pretty sure this is on like a three minute. There it is. Inside bar on the six minute, followed by initiation that broke structure. So that became my sell liquidity. This is the first kind of time that I've understood exactly what's happening in the market as in where I can potentially start to place my trades and, and start to set myself up for the trades. Um, again, this is observation. At this point, I'm in observation. I'm just understanding what's happening. I'm not looking to trade anything here. I'm just kind of understanding the flow of price and seeing what's happening. Because for me, we're still in this A to B leg. It's broken this structure here. So this is still a bullish leg. So we could still see higher prices from here at this point. Um, so again, I don't really want to be looking to buy or sell at the moment. I just literally just want to be patient and observe. Um, but yeah, so obviously found my um, sell liquidity range in here. Price is reacting, reacting, reacting. We get a move down and we break structure. So back onto the minute. The minute here, we can see that nice and clearly. It's literally just move this across. 
it is literally just buy to sell. And in that buy to sell range is where all the liquidity is going to be. Other one? All the liquidity is going to be. So um, that's literally it. And then it's just using time frames to, again, understand what's happening. And it's the same thing with this here. Like I'm, all I'm doing is I understand that this is a sideways range. I just want to use my time frames again to just find the candles that make sense to me. So again, doji candle here, followed by initiation. We break structure here. So price has to react out of this. This is buy liquidity something there. I hope you can't hear that wind. It's insane. And again, just doing the same thing over and over again, just to speak this across actually. Yeah. Um, four minutes. There is four minutes. So again, doji candle, again, followed by an initiation. This didn't break any structure. So for me, this is just uh, understanding that we have to react out of here, but this could just become a weak low because we haven't broken anything. Um, and obviously we'd break this high if that became a strong low. Um, but yeah, price is reacting out, as we can see. Reaction, reaction, reaction. We break structure, so that becomes that A to B leg following the swing. So now we've got continuation structure in the market. Now all I'm gonna do is look for continuation. And that was obviously the basis for this trade here. I understood that two things I was looking for in this A to B leg, being this A to B here. Like obviously, again, going back to the same understanding of a to B leg broke structure, that becomes my swing high to swing low price range. Then in that price range, we've got discount price and premium pricing. We want to be selling at premium and buying at discount. So all I want to do is look for what's in premium that I can take for a sell. And what we've we got here, full bodied OB, took out liquidity, initiation, broke multiple structures. So this is one place that I can start looking for sales. And then what else have we got in this price range? We've also got which was a two minute, three. Yeah, I mean, we can use this whole doji, just understanding, but I'm pretty sure that was a inside bar when I looked last time. Anyway, we'll leave that for now. But yeah, so doji candle, sell liquidity sat inside here, followed by initiation. So these are my two points that I was looking for sales. I was either looking at this one or this one if price had came higher. So obviously I saw this reaction. I didn't see much aggression happening at the time, seeing these, again, this is an inside bar on the two minute um, and the minute as well. Um, and again, this is that full bodied OB here as well, took out liquidity initiated, so we had to see a reaction. So these were kind of like two points I was looking at to see if price was gonna start to move up. So I was looking for a hedge. The first hedge that I took was here. Again, I'll show you on the two minute what I saw. Inside bar, again, doing the same thing from low to high, we reacted out this FU wick being buy liquidity in the market. So buy liquidity orders have to be reacted from. Then we see the reaction A to B leg broke structure here. So that becomes that bullish range again. So I like, even though we're in a bearish range between us, and I hope this doesn't get too confusing, but it's, it's all I'm doing is seeing both sides. It's not that I'm trying to confuse myself with shit, which is the A to B leg. No, they're both A to B legs. One's a bullish and one's a bearish. They both make sense for playing buys and they both make sense for playing sells. So that's all I'm doing. I'm just being able to see both sides. Um, so we get buy liquidity, we react, we break structure, A to B price leg. If I'm playing a bullish leg, then I again, I, I go back into discount pricing, what's in there that I can play. Well, this is a FU wick here on, I'm pretty sure it's like the four minute, this one here. We'll go back up to that so you can see it. Yeah, FU wick on the four minute, took liquidity, initiated, so this was two points that I was looking at in the market. There was this one that I had on, again, discount pricing. All I wanted to do was just see how that reacted. There was literally two, two places that I was looking at for buys. The first one was here. The second one was down here, and that was the FU wick. And I basically said to myself in the moment, obviously prices reacted out of this here, and we've seen that move down. All I want to do is see how price reacts to here, but I don't want to risk 2% on both of these trades because I'll end up starting to risk loads and loads of percentages and actually not even taking any percentage from this. So I just picked one and I picked the edge of the range, which ended up taking me out for 1%. Um, but again, it was a hedge for a potential higher prices. So everything made sense to play that hedge there. Again, edge of the range, 
F you whip on the four minute. Obviously just reacted and, and fucking took me out straight away. So um, again, then I was looking at my time frame, trying to understand what's happening um, in the market, just to try and find something that makes sense again. And again, what have we got? Doji candle followed by initiation break structure. So this would have been another potential, another potential entry that you could have taken if you had missed this one. Um, again, the stock would have been slightly bigger on that one, but um, price ended up running down anyway, so you would have ended up taking profit. Um, but that's pretty much it for the trade in terms of like what I was taking for the short. I hope it made sense. But again, it was just kind of hedging both sides because of the range that we were in. Um, obviously understanding that this could be sideways range for lower prices or this can be A to B leg for higher prices. So I just literally play on both sides and that's all I was doing for that trade. And obviously by the time I realized that price kept reacting out of this buy liquidity, it was about this time when I was like, I'm going to bed because I don't really want to sit here and watch how slow this is moving as well. But essentially all that's happening is price is going from sell liquidity to buy liquidity, creating a range stacking orders from buy orders which is used to push price up into sell orders used to push price down and then prices obviously continued lower so um then obviously that became basis for the next trade for the next day so last one's in water break but yeah then basically so same again the same process that i always do Realized price broke the low, so that momentum shift did actually eventually take the swing low, which was again an understanding that I was playing for this trade. Hit a one to ten while I was asleep. It was like three a.m., so woke up to a TP, which is always nice. Um, and then again, done the same thing. Find the range, this sideways range here. Um, that's where all the orders are going to be stacked. We've got a doji that we can already see here before an initiation. If we go down time frames, we can see full bodied OB. So again, two entries in one, if, if um, that makes sense. And obviously inside Bardo as well. So everything is showing sell liquidity at this position. So again, that's a potential reaction I might want to play in the future, if that makes sense. Now this can pretend, Now we can understand the full picture of this can potentially be caused for this. Um, but yeah, again, all I wanted to do was a to B leg, I can see that we're bearish. I don't even need to go up to the time frame to see that we're bearish. Um, we've reacted out of this. FU wick, followed by initiation. So buy liquidity gets reacted from, again, full body OB gets reacted from here. So I did have an entry at the 50% here for this one to play this long, because again, we've broken structure here. That's my A to B leg, reacted out of something. I didn't even look what we reacted from, but we've obviously reacted out of some sort of buy liquidity. Um, orders and then I've got entry for continuation here again that became cause for a true mitigation and then that was the that was a potential long I would, could have taken I did have a 50% order here um, again we could have played the open but with this like size of the stop I'd rather play the 50% and then these were the two places that I was looking at so first one was um, and again sorry going back to the, the process just so you can understand it again um, swing high to swing low, broken structure here. That gives me my A to B price leg range, right? Again, just want to look at where 50% is, what I can play in um, premium pricing. And these became my three places that I could play a trade. So first trade that I played was here. And this is a... Doji mode four, three, three minute doji. I'm pretty sure I find on a two minute as well. Yeah, two minute doji. And one thing I've noticed about using like two and three minute together, sometimes the candles can look a bit dodgy. As in like sometimes they can be perfect and sometimes they can look like up here and just look out of place. But again, it's just about picking one and just being confident with whatever you pick. But again, doji candle, you can see this the sideways range here. That we've seen doji candle represents a, a lower time frame range as well followed by initiation price never came back so yeah this was literally the entry that i took by the time i saw this i woke up and it was pretty much here and in here then obviously i took this as the sell liquidity because again we're still in that bearish leg so all i'm doing is just trying to take anything that i can see within that bearish leg um and obviously past 50 percent 
had that first tap in, reacted out of this, which I'm pretty sure is um, pretty cool inside bar on a different time frame. And then cool, I had my area that I'm going to sell, these three areas here. And then I have an area that I can buy. And again, I'm in a bearish A to B leg, but we're at low prices and I want to hedge because if this ends up being a move to higher prices and this high gets taken and this is a true MS, then again, if I can get in a trade down here, I can hit a nice 10% before price even gets to the high. Um, and that was my understanding. So this one right here, what's happening here, again, use your timeframes, inside bar on the three minute, four minute, five minute doji candle followed by initiation of broke structure. So we got more enough evidence to take a trade there. Um, but all we want to do is find where sell liquidity orders are within premium pricing. That's literally it. One of these is going to get a reaction and that reaction is going to potentially continue lower prices. But yeah, so the first trade I took was here this morning, literally around about here. I'm pretty sure I ended it pretty late. So, um, I got the stop that I wanted with the limit order that I wanted. 1.2 pip stop would have been um, the entry that I got. And remember I said before, like the, with me entering trades in this way with this refinement, my stops are getting a lot smaller as well. So again, the, the price doesn't need to move as much for me to make 10%, which again is better. It's only got to move 12 pips for me to make 10%, which is pretty fucking insane. Um, second one was, so obviously this became a break even after this reaction down broke structure. And obviously I see price aggressively coming back up, ended up taking a break even. Um, and there, then where's my next place up here? I realized this very late. So normally obviously I'll just stick a limit order on and leave it, which would have been literally perfect. And again, would have had me a nice 1.5 bit stop. But when I realized, when I was using my time frames, looking at where the next place was, um, I really, the price was coming in so quick. I just had to obviously enter at market as I'm seeing price react away. Um, and that became my second trade. Obviously, we got a very nice aggressive move down. So I moved my stop to break even, price comes back up, straight back into the sell liquidity, takes me out and then drops, which again, I can't fucking help. Um, but yeah, that was pretty much it in terms of um, the trades. Obviously, this one became a break even. Um, could have kept it open, but who the fuck knows? It's not going to come to the edge of the range and drop. Um, and I'd much rather take a break even, be right on my narrative um, and do something consistently because if I had left this one open, I would have got taken out for 1%. Um, and then if I had left this one open, I would have got, I would have taken a, taken a winner, but who knows what the outcome to the trade is going to be. All I can do is just manage my risk at the times where I think price isn't going to come back. Um, and if price comes back, then it comes back. There's not really anything I can I can do about that. It's all based on my performance and my performance is understanding the process that I do over time, the execution that I have, which the execution on both of these trades could definitely have been better, but that's something for me to improve on um, in terms of just using the limit order and being very precise. Um, but yeah, so it's overall about performance, isn't it? Like I've been able to catch 10% overnight. These are two other trades that I could have taken, which could have made um, a couple more profits. But if I keep the same process over and over and over and over again, then that's how I make percentage in the market and, and always be on the right side of probability. So, um, yes. Um, so over to questions now. I'm just going to try and fly through questions a little bit just so it doesn't become a massive webinar. Um, good question. You guys said that these things validate a range for narrative building mitigation to mitigation fu wick range has been li liquidated it seems like your trading has changed or am i missing something no it hasn't changed this has kind of evolved to what i'm seeing so like if i know that every time i see a doji candle that's in premium pricing or an inside bar or a full body ob or an fu wick anytime i see these in premium pricing from an a to b leg we always see a reaction if i see a buy to sell multiple candles buy to sell we do always see a reaction, but sometimes that reaction just becomes a new range and then actually takes me out. So from my experience, I've understood that I don't want to be taking anything other than these candles. And I know, I mean, look, th this is this is one day's worth of price and this is potentially 30% worth of, and I mean, this one is a break even, don't get me wrong, but that's potentially 20 to 30% worth of entries in what, 
since one o'clock to one o'clock so in a day so this is pretty much happening on a daily basis as well and and there's entries on every single day so it's just like you need to find your way that works for you and, and makes sense for you and this is the way that works and makes sense for me it's something that i can apply every single time on my entries and a take profit system that if i have the same take profit all the time i don't ever have to think about once I'm in a trade, what do I do? You know, where do I manage it? So on and so on. Like the way I want my life to be in the future is that I'm traveling and having a very busy life. So all I want to put my focus on is narrative building and execution and making sure that every single trade is executed flawlessly so that when I come to marking up at the end of the day, all I want to do is think about higher time frame narrative, where everything is and execution and executing my trade properly um, and making my trade execution flawless so that when it comes to um future down the line when i'm traveling and, and just living life that i want like how i want to i can just execute the trade and i'm done for the day and if it hits tp it does and if it doesn't then it doesn't but i'll have the same process that i have over and over and over again that's what trading's about keeping your process consistent keeping your system consistent um and just obviously getting better which is exactly what i'm doing so um there was another question about uh, I think Bia said, yeah, do you only take one to tens and never leave some running? So the amount of fucking trades that I've seen where I've hit a one to 10 and it's come out and taken me for break even has, has led me to make the decision that I'm only holding trades for 10%. Because, and there's two reasons why I'm doing this. First of all, through my experience, of course, the amount of trades I've taken where they've hit 10% and then come for break even, that, frustra that amount of frustration over and over and over again forces me to make different decisions and, and do something different. So that's when I understood about this 10% thing, just doing 10% a day. Um, and look, in the market every day, there's you know two, three, four, one to 10 opportunities that I can take. So spoil for opportunity. Um, and the second thing was from a probabilistic perspective. Like if I'm looking at holding trades for like a one to 10, one to 15, one to 20, how many trades do I have to take before I hit a 1 to 10, 1 to 15, 1 to 20? I know that if I've got a, you know, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4 pip stop, I can pretty much catch 14 pips on a daily basis. But the market doesn't always move 1 to 20 every single day. So I would much rather bank 1 to 10s consistently on a daily basis rather than trying to catch those massive, massive trades and, and trying to catch those, you know, home runs all the time. Um, for me, it's more important to just... Uh, yeah, for me, it's just more important to stay consistent with my process. And my process is one to tens that I know I can catch. Um, I, I have a quick question. Um, if you can go to your first trade, the first markup. You say this one? Yeah. yeah go on. So I'm just, I just need some clarity on the um, A to B leg here. Yeah. So when I'm looking at it, uh, Sorry, there you go. cool. When I'm looking at it, this is where I'm thinking is the A to B, and then you're now playing the react the fifty percent reaction, but you have it marked here. So I was just um, yeah. So I don't know if you can clarify that after it's happened. So if I remember what I said about how I'm playing both sides here between understanding that this can be an A to B leg, but also we're in this A to B leg lower prices i'm just doing exactly the same thing here so this is the a to b leg for a bullish leg but if i'm playing the other side and this is a true momentum shift then this is the a to b leg currently that i can play obviously when i've realized that this has played out and it's happened after then i realize that this is the a to b leg that's being played but oh yeah. okay gotcha so that's the after the okay yeah, yeah, right. cool. like obviously in the moment this is the a to b leg that i'm playing because gotcha. I, we don't have any information on this side yet but Obviously, after that's happened and we get the low break, now this is the A to B leg that I'm playing. Yeah, and then if you were at the charts, then you this is where you would probably, well, if it was, this is this is the type of trade you would take, right? Somewhere up around here. Yeah, it just literally depends on if there's any sort of candle that I can play up there, which for me there isn't any. Like this, I know that this is a full-bodied OB on a higher time frame, so price is going to react out of this, but. To be more specific with my entry, there's nothing in here that I can take. Um, and that's fine though as well. That's that's something that I, I have to accept with trading in the way that I trade. I don't have to have 
entries every single time um because i know that there is literally an abundance of opportunities daily so um, it's about just sticking to it all right that makes sense thank you You're welcome. um to these questions though um I'm sorry, bro. thank you. You're welcome, you're welcome. Um, what's the difference between MS and break in structure? So MS, so let's say this is a higher time frame, sell liquidity order. Price is bullish right now. Price has now become bearish, momentum shift. So take the swing points in here, and this is continuation structure. Again, people call it trend, whatever the fuck you want to call it. It's continuation structure, right? This market's trending up. Um, so yeah. When we've changed from this to momentum shift, now we're changing into a bearish A to B leg. So this is all bullish A to B leg. A, B, A, B, A, B. These are bullish legs. These are bullish own ranges. When we change structure here, that's when we've now changed to a bearish structure from A to B leg. That's broke structure here. So the, like you can have an MS, but still not have a breaker structure. For example, if we're in continuation structure, we could get something like this. So you're still in an A to B bullish leg and that's broken structure here. So these are all breaks of structure, break of structure, MS. This is a break of structure, but this is an MS. Momentum shift, reversal structure. That's all you're looking for. But the more significant thing is it's happening at a place at a higher time frame, sell liquidity, where we could actually see a momentum shift and a full on structure shift down here. So then that becomes that A, and let's say that's B, for example, like here, A to B. Momentum shifts happened up here, but this is that A to B leg now where we can potentially start seeing structure shift. Um, but yeah, that's all it is. Like you can have a momentum shift and you have to have a momentum shift in order for price to come and pull back to then continue. But it's just about where that momentum shift is happening. Is it happening at higher time frame sell liquidity order or is it just happening to react out of something to become a pullback to continue? I hope that makes sense. So. Do you not consider taking partials? Well, if I can, in terms of thinking in a probabilistic perspective, if I hit a one to 10, that means I have to take another, what, eight losses to still make 10% or like 11% or something. So I literally have to have a 20% strike rate, which is fucking insane to, to make 11%. I think it's like 11 or 12%. So all I want to do, that's, that's where my understanding for using 10% came from. It was just, based on probabilities, I don't have to put any pressure on myself to catch winners all the time, all the time, all the time. It's more just making sure my entry is flawless because my entries will take care of themselves. After I've got an entry right and my A to B leg right and I'm selling at premium, like how many times do you have to sell at premium um, with um, a sell liquidity order that you've identified where price is going to continue? in a continuation structure, like it's, it's very likely to happen. So I'm always putting myself on the higher side of probability for something to happen. Um, and then it's just about executing that system flawlessly, which is what I'm um, working to do now and make everything limit orders. Um, but taking partials, like what's the point? Am I gonna take a partial at one to five and bank two and a half percent and then bank the rest of the percent and only make 7%? Well, now I put more pressure on myself to, um, hit more than a 20% strike rate. So for me, even if like the, at the start of the week I took a trade, it, it ended up hitting like six or 7% and taking me out for break even. What do I do to start crying about it? Well, no, it's, this is my system. This is my system that I know works. Sometimes I'm gonna hit eight or 9%, it's gonna come back and take me break even. That's just how it is. That's how trading is. It's not about changing your system. It's about sticking to the same system that you know that works, that makes you profitable and keep the pressure off me to execute 100% strike rates and all this sort of stuff. Like with the strike rate, with the, the consistency that I have in how I look at the charts, hitting a 20% strike rate is very possible. Again, if I hit up to, you know, 30, 40, 50% strike rates and 60% strike rates, that's when the massive, massive, massive percentages come in. So um, that's my only focus right now. And, and when I think about how do I hit those sort of, you know, 
60, 70, 80 percent strike rates, well, it's getting my entries better and my entries more flawless. So then it just comes down to, again, performance in the moment and making sure my entries are flawless. And that's where I put all my attention. You showed A to B leg that you're playing this morning. Yeah, literally here. So I based on price delivery, sideways range, initiation, broke structure. That's the range before the break. That's the A to B leg. Like you could use this high, you could use this low, this high, this low. But all I wanted to do was do this high because that's where the sell liquidity is at. So that's the range that broke the structure. So that becomes my A to B leg. Could you go over the type of candles you look for for your narrative? Yeah, it's the same ones every time. Doji. Remember, like Doji, inside bar, full body OB. With, you know, you can have little tiny whips on either side, but full bodies. And I want to use full bodies because I know that there's a lot of liquidity sat inside full bodies. And then Doji candle. Get your drawing, but you get it. Plus. I don't get this, then I don't enter the market. This is my rules of entry or a sideways range, followed by an initiation. These are my rules of entry right here. I don't enter the market unless I see this. And I use these time frames to find one of these, followed by an initiation of break structure. That's what I do. Because again, I know I can find that. And it's about keeping it consistent every time. If I take a buy to sell that looks different every time, it, then I'm going to have different sorts of outcomes with different sorts of entries. If I take the same entry candles every single time, then I can always base it off something and understanding that I have. So that if this stops working, I can say, cool, well, maybe I don't want to take inside bars anymore because they're too inconsistent for my entries. But these sorts of entries, I've seen over and over and over again, we get reactions. So these are the ones that I want to take. Um, so you start to lean towards placing limit orders instead of like the only the only reason I'll enter live market live is if my limit order's missed or if I'm just too late, which I want to stop doing is I want to stop doing the too late thing as well. Um, and actually only sticking to limit orders. That's because for me, limit orders are just there's zero emotion in limit orders. Like getting in and out of the trade is just flawless in terms of limit orders. So I much prefer doing it. Um, sometimes when I enter trades um, at market order, sometimes like the emotion can take over and I sometimes get up FOMO. So for me, the best way for me to enter the market is limit orders. Um, but again, I just use the same process that if I don't get tagged in at the open, then I'll enter at market. But all that has to be set up. So again, it's just about me being more prepared. Um, A to B legs, I mean, we'll go that over that another time. Um, but yeah, that's all the questions then. But I hope that makes sense to everyone. Obviously, EU's just taking a shit. Pretty crazy. But yeah, I'm going to stop recording there. Thank you for watching, whoever uh, is watching this recorded.